Okay, so up to this point, we've been working a lot with limits and summation notation. You might be wondering, what is all this leading to? What do we need all this for? Okay, it's actually all leading up to this right here. We're going to use that information to find the exact area under a curve, but we're going to be using it with limits. So I have the, this picture that's drawn here kind of illustrates what we're going to be focusing on. What I want to do is I want to take the area of one rectangle, but I want to do it multiple times. So I'm going to find the area of multiple rectangles, and I'm going to add them all together. It's exactly the same that you have done before in the previous section. The previous section they told you how many rectangles to draw here, and we did it all by estimation. Well, instead of doing estimation now, we want to actually find the exact area. So the idea here is we want to fit as many of these rectangles in there as possible. So first, let's go ahead and derive the formula that we're going to be using here in order to find the exact area under the curve by using limits. We're going to take one strip. This is just one strip here, and we have a couple uh, variables we want to talk about. Your n is the number of rectangles that you have. And then the CI tells you specifically which rectangle are we working with. Are we working with the first one, the last one? And the CI there, that's where it actually hits the curve itself. And that's going to determine the length of that particular rectangle. Now, I should point out that your CI we're using here is, we're using a midpoint in this drawing, but you could also use the right-hand endpoint if you're working with uh, upper or lower sums, and you could use the left-hand endpoint depending on if you're working on lower upper sums. So you could actually use either one there. So with that, now we have know all the variables. We're working only between the interval from A to B. Let's go ahead and, and write the formula. The formula is going to be length times width to find an area of a rectangle. So I want to find the area of just this one rectangle that's there. And that area is going to be F of CI and then times delta X. That's length times width right there, and that will get you the area of one rectangle. And one rectangle is good, but I'd like to have more of them if I can. So what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to end up drawing more rectangles in here, and I'm going to find the area of those and add them all together. Okay, well this will give you the area of actually each individual rectangle, because remember the I is talking about which particular rectangle I'm at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a summation here, and the summation is used because I'm talking about the word adding. I'm, if I'm adding multiple things together, then mathematically I want to use a summation notation there. So this is going to give me the sum of all the rectangles from 1 to n. But that's not going to give me an exact answer because we don't know what n is equal to. Before, they told us how many rectangles we had, but this time we, we have uh, n. So we're going to get an answer that has n's in it. Okay, well how many rectangles do I, do I need here? Okay, well, we talked about before in the previous section that more rectangles is better. The more rectangles you have, the better uh, area, the better accuracy you're going to have in finding the area. So what if I decide to use an infinite number? That would give me the most exact solution. So the n represents the number of rectangles. I want to take an infinite number of rectangles, find the area of each one, and add them together. So this formula here is the one that you're going to be using for problems for the rest of this section, we're, we're going to be using this to find the exact area underneath the curve. So because we're going to be going to infinity, we're going to fit as many rectangles as possible between A and B, and that will allow us to fill in all the little extra spaces and get the exact area. Well, in order to do this, though, we have to know what delta x and ci are. So let's do delta x. Your delta x, you're going to find that by taking the right endpoint minus the left one. So we're going to do B minus A, and then we're going to divide that by how many rectangles we had. This is what, exactly what we did before in the previous section, except that usually they give you a number for N. In this case, we don't know it's going to, exactly how many we have. It's going to be going to infinity, so that's why we use N there. Now let's take a look at this. If N goes to infinity, what's happening to my width here? Well, this bottom number is getting bigger and bigger, and as it gets bigger, the whole entire result is going to get smaller. In fact, it's going to end up going to zero. And that makes sense because in order to fit the maximum number in here, the width is going to have to be really, really small in order to fit the maximum number of rectangles underneath the curve. We're also going to take a look at the CI. Now, CI is kind of like an increment. It's a number that tells you which particular uh, rectangle you're at. Now, I'm, I, I need to do all this with respect to the starting point here because the A it could be at zero, but it might be at some other number. So I need to start my start counting 
from A, and then from there, in order to get the very next one, if I was at CI and I wanted to get the very next one over here, what I can do is just add a delta x to it, however wide the rectangle is, I can add a delta x and that'll take me over to the next one. So I'm going to have a delta x and then times i, and then this is the formula itself that I'm going to use for finding out what exact x value am I at. So this, this part right here is the one that's going to be going into the function itself because I want to see where, how high the, the height is on that point. So this essentially is going to be an x value telling you where you are along there. So for the future problems that we're going to be doing in this section, you're going to be taking the delta x and your ci and, and plugging them both into this formula. And then you're going to be using a bunch of limit techniques and summation formulas and things like that to simplify it down. So that's what the next problems in this section are going to cover.